My name is Johnny Hunter. I'm from Dexter, Missouri. Uh, we're gonna no-till about 5,400 acres in 2016. We're growing uh, field corn, popcorn, non-GMO soybeans, rice, uh, and I'm actually gonna do about 400 acres of pumpkins this year. Uh, I'm gonna no-till those as well. Uh, gonna have probably about 1,200 acres of cotton and uh, so we're, uh, we're all excited to see what 2016 will bring us. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm standing next to today is our uh, John Deere DB60 planter. We, uh, we bought this planter, uh, I'd say fall of 2015. It was just your standard run of the mill DB60. It was ground driven. Uh, I found it over in, uh, over in Kentucky. It's 20 inch rows spacing. Uh, it's new for us this year. Traditionally in southeast Missouri, uh, we're mostly furrow irrigated. We're mostly 38 inch wide row uh, bed configuration. So moving to, moving back to 20 inch spacing is hard, but it's really hard in southeast Missouri because nobody nobody's doing it over here. You've got some guys right across the river uh, in Tennessee and Kentucky that do it. So where we're located, we're, we're in the very southeast corner of the state of Missouri, uh, in the Delta region, uh, what we call the Boot Hill, where, where the state of Missouri makes the uh, makes the cut into Arkansas. So our farming practices here are more akin to Arkansas and Mississippi and Louisiana than they are to, to farmers who are even just 30 or 45 minutes north or an hour north of me. We're uh, we're really excited about this planter. We uh, we got to looking at it, and we we we've been cover cropping and no-tilling. I've I've been no-tilling since 2012, trying to make that system work for me. Bringing cover crops into that system was a huge benefit for me, and we really like what we've seen. What we're trying to do is, you know, improve our cost of. Uh, ownership of this equipment by having less of it and you know the, the cost of ownership when you start talking about no-tilling and cover crops we were able to get rid of a lot of our, our, our tillage equipment so what we're, what we're trying to do is, is scale down to more a more profitable size and one of the big things we knew we wanted to do was we wanted these cover crops to be on the ground we wanted them flat on the ground when you hear guys like Ray Archuleta talk and, and, and Dave Brandt and Gabe Brown, you know, the, uh, the gurus, so to speak, of the cover crops, the one thing they tell you is they want that residue flat on the ground. So we've been using smooth rollers and hipper rollers trying to get this cover crop down on the ground. We've been having some success with that. Uh, but now that ties up a man, a tractor, and a roller. And so in order to become more profitable and uh, you know, improve, my, improve my financial situation, we felt like if we could get a tool to mount on the planter, uh, that would really help us out because now we're, now we're rolling and planting at the same time. And that's why I was so excited when Don uh, Manufacturing came out with their, their biologic rollers. I saw them first in a uh, in a, uh, a small farming publication where a man before a man had kind of invented the system and, and I was blown away by it. And so when Don brought this on a big scale to where you could buy it, I was really excited. So when we bought this planter, we called Don uh, Manufacturing and we told him what we wanted to do and. I was a little nervous about it because you know they had they had mentioned that they had never done a planter this big before, but they said send it up, we'll we'll figure it out. So we sent this planter up to Don, and they had to do a lot of engineering to make this thing work, and a lot of custom pieces, and we're, we're we couldn't be happier with the job that they did. Everything that they did has been really, uh, really professional, really well engineered, really heavy. One of the bigger challenges they had was making making the Don Biologic system uh, roller system fit where a tire was going to be in the way. 
So your whole back row back here, uh, all these units, uh, historically they run really close to these tires. So Don had to come up with a bracket to set back your planter units in order to set back the roller unit. Uh, on more of the, on the wing frame where the clearance is, is much better and there's nothing obstructing, there's no tire in the way, they were able to, to mount the planter unit as normal on the bar and then bring the unit forward. But anywhere where there's a tire or there's a frame, they've had to do a lot of setback work. Uh, Don was also really, really good to work with our local supplier. Uh, we, uh, we have a good working relationship with, with a lot of our equipment dealers here, and they were really good to work with, with those people and keep them in the loop. Because on top of putting the biologic rollers, we also added a, uh, an inferro system, uh, and we also added a hydraulic drive to the planter. The planter was originally a ground-driven planter. Uh, we felt like moving into the future, we wanted to be able to do have some variable rate options. Uh, we're not quite there yet, so but to, to, to have that option available to us in the future, we, we really like that. And to be able to shift your population on the fly. So we're, we're excited about this planter. This planter is going to plant all of our corn and popcorn. Uh, we have uh, another DB60 that's going to plant all of our uh, soybeans and cotton. Our cotton is going to be on 40 inch space uh, and then our soybeans are going to be uh, 20 as well. So this, uh, this, this planter for us signifies the future and the direction that we're going. Uh, we want less equipment, less maintenance, uh, more profit. And uh, we feel cover crops and no-till uh, are the way to get there and, and this tool is going to help us maximize that cover crop investment. So uh, what we're going to be doing in 2016, we're, we're going to pull into the, the field, uh, an actively growing cover crop field. Uh, generally on a, on, a, on a corn mix, one of, our, one of our favorite recipes or cocktails, if you will, will be comprised of annual ryegrass. Uh, we back up, it will be comprised of KB Royal ryegrass. It will be uh, TNT Hairy Vetch nitro radish, crimson clover. Uh, we'll also, depending on the situation, we may throw in some red clover. We like a lot of legumes and we like KB roll ryegrass with our, with our corn mix. So we'll pull in with the spray rig. We'll terminate that cover crop uh, 48 hours later. We'll pull in with the planter into, it's still gonna be a standing green cover crop field. We're gonna set the planter down and we're gonna go to work. Uh, we're, we're excited by the prospect of that because normally we'll, we'll be pulling a, a, an additional tractor through with an additional roller, an additional man, and then we have the planter coming behind him. But now that we have a one pass uh, opportunity here, we're really excited by that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help lay this cover crop mat on the ground. Annual ryegrass doesn't historically lay down quite as well as your taller cereal rye or, or barley or things of that nature uh, which is why we like a lot of things in our mixture to help hold it down uh, but we're letting our cover crops now we're letting them go till you know they're they're hopefully they're at least waist high uh, if not taller we want our cover crops to be as big and tall as we can get them to get a, as much biomass as we can